One afternoon in the spring of 2006, Damani Lewis, a math teacher at Parks Middle School in Atlanta, unlocked the room where standardized tests were kept. It was the week before his students took the Criterion Referenced Competency Test, which determined whether schools in Georgia had met federal standards of achievement. Lewis, a slim 29-year-old with dreadlocks, slid open the cellophane-wrapped tests and made copies of the math, reading, and language arts sections. These sections were crucial under the No Child Left Behind Act to determine if Parks Middle School would face its sixth consecutive year of potential sanctions. If not enough students would pass, the school faced closure. He refused to allow a system to label his hardworking students as failures and was determined to avert any loss of their motivation. Thanks to Lewis and other teachers, Parks students did better than ever on the standardized tests. This is the story of the Atlanta Public Schools massive cheating scandal, where teachers systematically changed students' test answers, resulting in widespread falsification of student achievement. At the turn of the millennium, American education was at a crossroads. The No Child Left Behind Act, signed into law in 2001, heralded a new era of accountability and standardized testing. Schools across the nation were now under the microscope. Their funding and reputations hinged on their students' performance on state-administered exams. Atlanta Public Schools, a district grappling with underperformance, found itself under immense pressure to turn the tides. In an environment where test scores were the ultimate measure of success, the district was desperate to produce results. Superintendents and educators alike felt the squeeze. Failure to improve metrics could mean sanctions, or worse, closure. And as the early 2000s unfolded, Atlanta's educational landscape began to change. Test scores across the district rose steadily, a trend that did not go unnoticed. The city that had been wrestling with educational performance was suddenly lauded as a miracle of reform. Superintendent Beverly Hall, appointed in 1999, became synonymous with this turnaround, collecting accolades and a National Superintendent of the Year Award in 2009. Her mantra, no exceptions, no excuses, echoed through the school system. Under Hall's leadership, the district set aggressive targets for student achievement. Bonuses and public praise were bestowed upon those who delivered, while failure to meet these benchmarks resulted in professional consequences. The stakes were clear, perform or perish. And perform they did. By the mid-2000s, Atlanta reported dramatic improvements in student performance, with some schools doubling their scores. This surge in achievement wasn't just in isolated pockets, but was reported district-wide stirring a mixture of admiration and disbelief in the educational community. Yet, as numbers soared, so did scrutiny. The extraordinary rise of Atlanta's test scores drew the eyes of statisticians and education experts. A state analysis in 2009 found that some schools in Atlanta had testing irregularities that were statistically improbable. The improbability of such consistent academic gains began to cast long shadows of doubt over the district's reported success, setting the stage for a deeper investigation into the roots of this sudden educational renaissance. The improbabilities flagged by experts were too glaring to ignore. It wasn't just a statistical anomaly. It was an alarm bell. Georgia's then-governor, Sonny Perdue, unsettled by the findings, commissioned an independent investigation he appointed two special prosecutors and a state agency to dig beneath the surface. What followed was a painstaking review of test papers and unusually uniform answer patterns began to emerge across classrooms. The investigators wielded eraser analysis as a key tool, detecting classrooms where answer sheets had abnormal numbers of wrong-to-right changes. In a system where one erasure is common, Atlanta schools were averaging a staggering number of changes per classroom. The probability of such corrections occurring by chance was less than one in a trillion, echoing a sentiment that there was deliberate intervention. As the evidence mounted, the truth became harder to contain. Interviews with educators revealed a culture of fear and intimidation, where the cost of not meeting targets was professionally and personally punitive. The confessions began as a trickle, and then a flood, 
uncovering a network of cheating that ran through the veins of the school district. It was a network that, once uncovered, would reveal how a relentless pursuit of success had compromised the very integrity of education in Atlanta. When the independent investigator's report finally saw the light of day, it read like a dossier on a crime ring, not a school district. The findings were damning. 178 teachers and principals in 44 schools had been involved in cheating. The report laid bare the systemic nature of the fraud, revealing that educators had been silently complicit or actively engaged in manipulating test scores. At the heart of the scandal was Superintendent Beverly Hall, who, the report claimed, either knew or should have known about the widespread cheating. The methods of cheating were as varied as they were inventive. Answers to test questions were changed, students were provided with correct responses during testing, and in some instances, attendance records were falsified to exclude underperforming students from the test-taking pool. The justification for these actions was chilling in its simplicity. The belief that the ends justified the means, that the pressure to perform was too great and the fear of reprisal too intense to ignore. The exposure of the cheating scandal sent shockwaves through the educational system, far beyond Atlanta's borders. It called into question the very metrics by which educational success was measured and challenged the nation to reflect on the unintended consequences of high-stakes testing. The fallout from the scandal was swift and severe. Legal proceedings kicked into gear, and the educators implicated found themselves facing the consequences of their actions. The report led to the indictment of 35 Atlanta Public Schools employees, including Superintendent Beverly Hall, who faced charges ranging from racketeering to false statements and theft. Throughout the process, she maintained her innocence and succumbed to breast cancer before her case could be resolved, leaving a complicated legacy and a school district in turmoil. But the real casualties of the Atlanta cheating scandal were the students. They had been advanced from grade to grade, ill-equipped for the challenges ahead, their educational deficiencies hidden beneath falsified test scores. Many found themselves in high school struggling to read at an elementary level, their fundamental learning gaps now cavernous. The community reeled from the betrayal, with trust in the school system eroded. Parents and local businesses who had championed the apparent success of the schools felt deceived. The pride once felt in the city's educational progress was replaced with a sense of skepticism. In the aftermath, Atlanta Public Schools undertook a massive overhaul, implementing new policies and measures to ensure the integrity of its testing procedures. But the deeper consequence, beyond the legal and administrative, was a sobering reminder that when educators are forced to choose between integrity and survival in a flawed system, it is ultimately the students who pay the highest price. The Atlanta cheating scandal stands as a stark reminder of the perils of prioritizing performance metrics over genuine learning. It forced educators and policymakers nationwide to reconsider the balance between accountability and undue pressure. The scandal's legacy is a cautionary tale, prompting a deeper inquiry into how we measure educational success. In the wake of the scandal, there's a collective acknowledgement that rebuilding trust will take time and that genuine progress cannot be rushed. The journey towards redemption for Atlanta schools is ongoing, with the hope that the hard-earned lessons will resonate beyond its borders. Reflecting on this saga, we're reminded of the inherent value in educating with honesty. It's a commitment to nurturing not just test takers, but thinkers, leaders, and informed citizens. The true measure of education lies in the minds and hearts it cultivates, a truth Atlanta will carry into its future chapters.